ראיתי כוכבים שמאירים את העולם, ועם הזמן הם נעלמים. טיפסתי על פסגות ערים בדרך, גם שאלתי בעצר, אך החכמים לא נתתי לעיניי להסתנוון מהמרון, והבנתי שיותר מדי זה לפעמים פחות. לקחת לי מתוך השקר שילה נשמה Our topic for today uh, is entitled Faithfully Enduring Servant While Engaged to Service or The Clever Two-Timer Servant This is taken from the parable of Lazarus and the Rich Man which is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 up to 31. To understand this parable, one must read the whole chapter 16, that is from verse 1 up to verse 31, in order to grasp uh, fully what the Master Rebbe Yeshua is teaching about this parable. This parable about Lazarus and the rich man covers the whole commandments of Adonai to his uh, servants how to be well pleasing to him and be with him in eternal life. This is so uh, powerful message that if you are asking yourself how can I serve God and be well pleasing to God and be sure of eternal life. If that question is in your heart then you have the answer in this message. So let us read chapter 16 of the Gospel of Luke, verses 1 up to 31. Speaking to the Talmudim, Yeshua said, There was a wealthy man who employed a general manager. Charges were brought to him that his manager was squandering his resources. He summoned him and asked him, What is this I hear from you? Turn in your accounts? for you can no longer be manager. Verse 3, What am I to do? said the manager to himself. My boss is firing me, I am not strong enough to dig ditches, and I am ashamed to go begging. Aha! I know what I'll do. Something that will make people welcome me into their homes after I've lost my job here. So, after making appointments, with each of his employer's debtors, he said to the first, How much do you owe my boss? 800 gallons of olive oil. He replied, Take your note back. He told him, Now quickly, sit down and write 100 or write 1 for 400. To the next he said, And you, how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. Take your note back and write one for eight hundred. And the employer of this dishonest manager applauded him for acting so shrewdly. For the worldly have more sechel. Sechel means uh, intelligence. For, for the worldly have more sechel than those who have received the light in dealing with their own kind of people. Now, what I say to you is this. Use worldly wealth to make friends for yourselves, so that when it gives out or when it runs out, you may be welcomed into your eternal home. Someone who is trustworthy in small matter is also trustworthy in large ones, and someone who is dishonest in a small matter is also dishonest in large ones. So if you are, if you haven't been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who is going to trust you with the real thing? And if you haven't been trustworthy with what belongs to someone else, who will give you what ought to belong to you? No servant can be ser can be slaves to two masters for he will either hate the first and love the second or scorn the second 
and be loyal to the first. You can't be slave to both God and money. Verse 14, the Parashim heard all this, and since they were money lovers, they ridiculed him. He, Yeshua, said to them, You people make yourselves look righteous to others, but God knows your hearts. What people regard highly is an abomination before God. Up to the time of Yohanan, there were the Torah and the prophets. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God has been proclaimed, and everyone is pushing to get in. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one stroke of a letter in the Torah to become void. Every man who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery, and a man who marries a woman divorced by her husband commits adultery. Verse 19, here goes the parable. Once there was a rich man who used to dress in the most expensive clothing and spent his days in magnificent luxury. At his gate has been laid a beggar named El Azar, in other translation Lazarus, who was covered with sores. He would have been glad to eat the, the scraps that fell from the rich man's table, but instead, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. In time, the beggar died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Sheol, where he was in torment, the rich man looked up and saw Abraham far away with Eleazar, Lazarus, at his side. He called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me. Send El Azar or Lazarus just to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. However, Abraham said, Son, remember that when you were alive, you got the good things while he got the bad. Now he gets his consolation here while you are the one in agony. Yet that isn't all. Between you and us, a deep rift has been established so that those who would like to pass from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Verse 27, he said, the rich man said, Then Father, I beg you, to send him to my father's house, where I have five brothers to warn them, so that they may be spared having to come to this place of torment too. But Abraham said, They have motioned the prophets. They should listen to them. However, he said, No, Father Abraham, they need more. If someone from the dead goes to them, they'll repent. But, he replied, Abraham replied, if they won't listen to Moshe and the prophets, they won't be conceived even if someone rises from the dead. This is the whole chapter of the Gospel of Luke chapter 16. And this is such a beautiful chapter that depicts a powerful picture and meaning that Yeshua the Messiah our Lord made a parable out of this beautiful story first of all I would like to 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 share to you the key verse of the whole chapter 16 in the Gospel of Luke is verse 13 it says no servant can, be, can serve to two masters, for he will either hate the first and love the second, or scorn the second and be loyal to the first. You can be a slave, or you can be a servant both to God and money. 
it's either you serve mammon that is the material wealth and or riches and dwell your heart and soul on material earth or serve God to eternal life if you will take note that from verse 1 Yeshua was speaking to his Talmudim Talmudim means disciples verse 1 says speaking to the Talmudim Yeshua said and then he made a story there was a wealthy man who employed a general manager and that manager was corrupt he was crooked he did something clever he did something shrewd and what did he do instead of uh, getting the the payment of those who are indebted to the wealthy man his boss what did he do he cut off the amount of payment in order to win the sympathy of those debtors because he said because I cannot I cannot work heavy jobs I, I cannot beg for money where am I, where am I gonna stay I don't have any place to stay so if I give them favor if I if I show good things to them at the expense of my boss then when I get fired I have something to to rest my my body I can I can I can be received by these people whom I gave favor so if you take notice in that teaching Yeshua the Messiah seemed to praise this crooked and corrupt manager or servant but but take note take note this pertains to the wealthy man and and his corrupt and clever ability Yeshua wasn't praising this corrupt manager he wasn't he wasn't uh, he wasn't praising this corrupt managers temporary earthly success plan but he was praising his cleverness and creativity in working towards his earthly aims and he said this kind of person is better than those enlightened believers called of God in pursuing the goal God has set forth before them I'm referring to service when somebody is called by God as Yeshua said you did not choose me but I have chosen you I have called you I've chosen you and I have ordained you to go and bear fruit the kind of fruit that will remain now the problem here is the words of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah that he seemed to to be praising that corrupt and clever uh, servant manager rather than those enlightened believers who are supposedly more smart and wise and intelligent with regards to service service to the Lord but it seemed to, it, it seemed not to work that way and I feel that it's really not the way it's happening as it should I'm referring to those who are are faithful enlightened believers called of God to service for his calling no, no doubt I, I don't have doubt that these enlightened believers they love the Lord and they cook they are committed to serve him however they lack the knowledge in Hebrew knowledge means the art the art it means the deep intimate knowledge of what God commands to his covenant people they just they they do not just lack the art or knowledge they also lack wisdom the word is Chachma Chachma the wisdom in order to apply the knowledge in order to be well pleasing in their service to God the words from Apostle uh, Apostle Paul Rabbi Shaul in Romans chapter 2 verse 19 letter B and I quote since in the Torah you have the embodiment of knowledge and truth 
Romans 2.19, letter B says, Since in the Torah, the Torah are the first five books of the Bible, of course, written in the original mother tongue Hebrew, it says, you have, since in the Torah, you have the embodiment of knowledge and truth. In the Torah, it's all there. Rabbi Shaul beautifully said it. So, may I repeat, that knowledge is the word, the art, it is the deep intimate knowledge of God and what He, he, he is commanding us to do. It's all in the Torah. It's all there. And not only that, the, the, the wisdom, how do we apply the knowledge? How do, we, how do we please God in the way that He wants to be served? Let me give you some scripture from the Torah which is very, very beautiful that we may really capture what is the will of God for each and every one of us when we want to serve God. In Leviticus, or Sefer Vayikra, that is Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 2, that is Parashat Kedoshim. In every book in the Torah, it is divided by portions. Portions in Hebrew is called Parashiot. The singular is parashat. The plural of portions is parashiot. So it's properly dissected. So when we go into in-depth study of Torah, we can truly pinpoint every detailed, important knowledge and wisdom that we can apply for our daily life. Okay? Coming from the very mouth of Hashem or Adonai. These are the words of Vayikra or Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2 and I'll quote in Hebrew it says Ve'amarta alechem chedoshim tihu ki kadosh ani Adonai Elohechem he said and they and God say, say to them to the children of Israel you shall be holy for I Adonai your God am holy first things first the calling of God to his covenant people is to be holy not instant holy but a life process walk of holiness what is holiness by the way let me just pause for a while i'll give you another passage from the scripture also in torah and that is in exodus chapter 16 or chapter 19 verse 6 that is in Parashat Yitro. Hashem said to the sons of Israel, Ve'atem tihu li mamlechet kohanim vigoi kadosh. What does it mean in English? And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Look at that. Hashem, Adonai, our Father God, was explicitly telling the people Israel in the house of Israel and even the nations of the world that grafted in by faith in the Lord and Savior Yeshua the Messiah grafted in themselves in the house of Israel the grafted in believers in Romans chapter 11 remember the very words of God the very original plan of God he said, They attempt to leave at Kohanim, the Goy Kadosh. And you shall be to me my possession. Hashem said, As what? As Mamlechet Kohanim, as kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The Goy Kadosh and a holy nation. So from two scriptures, it is very clear that Hashem Adonai has explicitly commanded His people that we are to be holy. For He, Adonai our God, is holy. And then He also made mention that we are His possession, His kingdom of priests and a holy nation. It was also spoken by Rabbi Kepha. Apostle Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 
For you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that God has called you out from the kingdom of darkness into His marvelous light. We are called by God to be priests, to be holy, set apart for Himself. You got the word. Holiness means to be sanctified. Holiness and sanctification are two words, but they are one in the same meaning. It means holiness is to be set apart. Sanctified is also to be set apart. Set apart from what? Set apart from our old nature. Set apart from, from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Set apart from the things we have been used to be living for our own self. But this time, we have been crossed over. We crossed over, that's the word avar, came from the root word ever, got the word ivri or Hebrew. Hebrew means the ones who crossed over over okay so we had crossed over from our old life from our old adamic life from our selfish attitude we had been crossed over from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous marvelous light that we should show it says we should show not just we should speak forth his praises no he said that we should show forth His praises. We are to demonstrate His praises. We are to actualize His praises. We should let the world know that the Lord is alive, living inside of these earthen vessels. And therefore, these people will be drawn close to the Lord and they will give the praises due unto him and him alone so take note set apart in yochanan john in the gospel of john chapter 17 verse 17 yeshua the messiah beautifully said it set them apart for holiness he was praying to his father in heaven and the prayer is set them apart for holiness by means of the truth i repeat sanctify them or set them apart for holiness look at that holiness sanctify it's the same what is the common word set apart to be set apart we are not of our own we are already god's possession rabbi shaul said we had been purchased with a price and that price is the precious shed life blood of yeshua the messiah our Lord and Savior. So we are now here in this kingdom of light to be slaves unto God. Exactly what the Gospel of Luke chapter 16 from verse 1 up to 31 is trying to convey to us. So let me continue. Set them apart from ho uh, for holiness by means of the truth. May I just ask you, what is the truth? When, uh, when Pontius Pilate was was uh, confronting Yeshua in his palace before he, he gave him the sentence to be crucified on that execution stake. Pontius Pilate asked, what is the truth? What is the emet? Truth in Hebrew means emet. The answer came from the very lips of our Master Rebbe, our Savior. Your word is truth. What is the truth? Your Torah. The word, the Torah, the word of God is emet. It is truth, my dear friends. Now, in verse 1, Yeshua the Messiah was talking to his disciples. And in verse 9, listen, verse 9, Now I say to you is this. Now I say to you, to, to you, my disciples, he's not talking to anyone else. He's not talking to the unbelievers. He's not talking to anyone but to his Talmidim. 
his disciples, his faithful learners, referring to Kepha, Matitiao, that's Matthew, uh, Yohanan, that's John, and the rest of the disciples. Take note, Yeshua the Messiah is directing his advice to his disciples. He said, look at this, use worldly wealth to make friends for yourself so that when it runs out, look at this, when it runs out, what, what does run out? The worldly wealth. He said, use worldly wealth. Again, use worldly wealth to make friends. This crooked and corrupt servant manager made friends with the debtors of the wealthy man, his boss, for, for the clever for the clever intention of these people to welcome him when he is kicked out from his work. He is to be welcomed by these people whom he gave favor. But God, Yeshua the Messiah, is also putting in some relevance to that story he made, now tossing it as an advice for his disciples. Yeshua the Messiah said, Use worldly wealth to make friends for yourself. I pause for a while. Use worldly wealth. So does, does that mean wealth is, is bad? Wealth is not bad. Is money bad? Money is not bad. Are riches, earthly riches, ri earthly riches bad? These are not bad either. Because Yeshua the Messiah said, use it. Use worldly wealth for whom? For whom? For yourselves. For yourselves. He said, use worldly wealth to make friends for yourselves. That crooked, clever, corrupt servant manager, he, he used not the right term of righteousness, but he manipulated his, uh, his uh, boss money to gain for himself. Now Yeshua the Messiah said, use worldly wealth to make friends. Here in the story, that crooked manager made friends with the debtors. This Yeshua said to the disciples, use worldly wealth to make friends to make friends to whom for yourselves now the question is what do he meant by that what do he meant by that my dear friends this is this in matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 23 from the complete jewish bible i quote do not store up for yourselves look at that lay up store up for yourselves wealth here on earth where moth and rust destroy and burglars break in and steal instead store up or lay up for yourselves wealth in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and burglar do not break in or steal for where your wealth is there your heart will be also look at that it's very parallel to what yeshua the messiah was was teaching to the to his doctor talmidim in the gospel of luke chapter 16 verses 1 up to verse 31 he said lay up for yourselves treasures not on earth but in heaven do not lay up for yourselves wealth here on earth but store up for yourselves wealth in heaven now he said for where your wealth is there your heart will be also and then he gave another verse another word that says this one the eye is the lamp of the body 
So if you have a good eye, that is, if you are generous, your whole body will be full of light. But if you have an evil eye, that is, if you are stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. I repeat, if you are, if you have an evil eye, that is to mean if you are stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow, that's very scary, my friends. It simply means this. There is no salvation where there is no light. No light, no salvation. Yeshua said, if your light is good, that is if you are generous. Look at that. This idiomatic Jewish expression that is so far from the Gentile understanding. That is the meaning of good eye. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? Yeshua the Messiah means if you are generous, if anyone is generous, his whole body will be full of light. But if you have an evil eye, that is to say, if you are stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? So very clear, my friends. If there's no light in us, it's darkness. And if it's darkness, there's no salvation. Because Yeshua is the one and only Savior of the world. And He is the light of our salvation. Isn't it? So no one, no one can be saved if He is a generous. If He possess a selfish, fearful, and stingy heart. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. So, wealth is good. Mammon is good. Material riches is also good. If we are not going to worship wealth. Again, if we are not going to worship wealth, but if we are going to worship with our wealth, that is good. If we're going to use our wealth, our riches, our mammon, our money to worship God, then it becomes good. Because in the Torah and in the Tanakh, it is very clear. God said it very explicit. And God said this, No man can approach me. No man can draw near to me empty-handed. No man. It doesn't work that way. If we want to worship Him, we are required of Him to give something that will surely be well-pleasing unto Him. Let us continue. Because we want to make friends, right? Yeshua said, Use worldly wealth to make friends for yourselves to make friends for yourselves question who are these friends that we are supposed to befriend yeshua the messiah said chapter 15 of john verses 14 to 15 and i quote you are my friends if you do what i command you I no longer call you slaves because a slave doesn't know what his master is about. But I have called you friends because everything I have heard from my father I have made known unto you. So the friends that Yeshua mentioned that we are supposed to use wealthy, our wealth or our material worldly wealth in order to make friends for ourselves those friends refers to 
himself himself and Hashem or God the Father we are to make friends with God we are to make friends with Yeshua because he said because what everything I as I heard from my father I have made known to you the will of God the will of the Father and the will of his son Yeshua the Messiah is for all of us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven and not here on this temporal earth now he said no man can serve two masters at the same time it's either he will love the one and hate the other he will despise the other one or or love the other no man can serve God and love money it will never work that way we are to love God and do not love money or material wealth why it is very very important for service it is very very important for service because no one can serve God without being faithful to money matters that is what the next verses is trying to explain is, is Yeshua is trying to explain so if you have been trust you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth who is going to trust you with the real thing the spiritual wealth if you have been trustworthy with what belongs to someone else for he will I someone else who will give you what ought to belong to you so this is about faithful stewardship how to use our resources in the right manner how we are going to be accountants and be accountable to to the to the wealth that God is entrusted to us and how is it going to be be faithful and lay it up for the kingdom of heaven now he went on while he was teaching this the, the Bible says that the Piroshim or the Pharisees was hearing his teaching on the side and they were sneering him they were sneering at him because he said they were money lovers they were sneering they were ridiculing him and he said to them you people make for yourselves look righteous to others you pass yourself as righteous and God's people but God looks at your hearts what people regard highly referring to the worldly wealth is an abomination before God and he went on to say up to the time of Yohanan referring to Yohanan ben Zachariah that is John the Baptist he said up to the time of Yohanan the immerser referring to Yohanan ben Zachariah John the Baptist there were the Torah and the prophets listen very carefully since then the good news of the kingdom of God had has been proclaimed and everyone is pushing to get in Yeshua the Messiah said this Torah the five books of Moses are being witnessed by the prophets that it's gonna it's gonna be it, they they have been foretelling it they have been teaching it the five books of the Bible referring to the coming Messiah Yeshua referring to the Mashiach of Israel by the way Yohanan the great prophet John the Baptist and he came from the tribe of Yehuda he he was I'm sorry rather he was a Levite and unto the eyes of God unto the eyes of Yeshua he was a Kohen Gadol a high priest so he said since since then the goodness of the kingdom has been proclaimed never stopped there wasn't any pause 
from the Torah that the mouth of the prophets had been witnessing and declaring and proclaiming that there's going to be the coming Mashiach, coming Messiah from, from the house of Israel. And He will be the light to the nations. And He will be the Savior, the salvation to the Gentiles and first to the Jewish people. But he said, but it is easier, it is easier, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away that one stroke of a letter in the Torah to become void. Look at that. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one stroke. One stroke is one, one, one uh, stroke, one dash, one, one. Um, one mark in the Hebrew letter to pass away. It will never happen. And then he went on to say, Every man who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And a man who marries a woman divorced by her husband commits adultery. What is this? What is this a segue? Is this a segue? No, it isn't. This this uh, man and woman committing adultery and, and the man or the woman divorced by her husband commits adultery is not the literal physical committing of adultery. It means the Torah can never be separated from the people of God. And the people of God can never be separated from God's Torah. Look at that. That is so deep and spiritual, my friends. The Torah is God's marriage contract to His bride. And His bride is none other than the house of Israel, the Jewish people. Then He went on to say about the parable of the, of the rich man and Lazarus. And take note of this. This this uh this uh parable says one day the beggar lazarus died this this beggar represents those who lived enduring sufferings while engaged in service listen to that those servants who were enduring hardness and suffering while engaged in the service till the end. This is the type of the El Asar or Lazarus. When they died or when he died, what happened? He was carried up to Abraham's side or bosom. Do you remember, my dear friends, when Yeshua the Messiah promised that the thief who was repenting, who was requesting Yeshua, remember me, my Lord. And Yeshua promised him and said, I promise you this day you are going to be with me in paradise. Do you remember that? That paradise mentioned here or mentioned in, in one gospel is the same place as Abraham's side or Abraham's bosom. Yeshua said, today you shall be with me in paradise. Or you can say, today you shall be with me in Abraham's bosom or Abraham's side. The place where the righteous is going to have their eternal shalom. Others call it as Gan Eden. Gan Eden in English means the Garden of Eden. Remember? When Adam and Chava fell in sin, after they fell in sin, they were no longer a uh, creation of light. But God is to give them a, a corruptible body like what we have, a mortal body. Before they haven't fallen in sin, they, they do not possess this flesh. They were light. They were created in the image and pure likeness of God. 
they were just or light. The Shekinah, the presence of God, are, are their clothing. They were priests unto God in the garden to take to take authority, to take to dominion over the creation of God when they haven't fallen in sin. But after the fall of Adam and Chava, the Bible says that they were thrown out of that garden of Eden and God kept that garden to be guarded by Kirovim and a flaming sword that is in Genesis 3.24 he said and I quote so he drove the man out and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden the Kirovim and the flaming sword which turned in every direction to guard the way of the tree of life so it is still well kept up to now for all the righteous who served the Lord, who endured sufferings while engaging their service to God up to the end, like that of Lazarus. They were brought to that place, Abraham's bosom, Abraham's side, paradise or garden of Eden, to sleep soundly and wait for the proper time for the resurrection of the dead will happen my dear friends again i repeat it is the place where the faithful souls who endured sufferings while engaged i'm always hooking that up while engaged in the service till the end why did i say that because many many good well-meaning servants of God suffer and endure hardness manifold kind of sufferings but in the in the process they disengage themselves in the service they go for a break they say pause for a while I have to take a break no, that is not the Bible. That is not what God wants us to do. Taking a rest is good. It's all right. To take a little kind of pause is all right. But not a long pause. And not to, to, to divert our focus on going to vacation, going to leisure, going to trips and all those things, which is a nonsensical thing to do. Look, on the other hand, on the other hand, the rich man died. This represents those lovers of material wealth, riches, those servants of mammon, those servants of riches. And they die. The Bible says in Seol, he was in pain. He was in torment. So, if that is the case, Sheol, in Hebrew, Sheol, in English, the grave. But, did, did a wealthy man, the rich man, stay in the grave? I don't think so. I think he stayed there for a while and then he was thrown into the fire called Gehinom, the lake of fire. Why did I say that? Because the Bible tells me so. There is no rest among the wicked, the Bible says. In Isaiah 57 verse 20 and 20, 21, it says, But the wicked are like the restless sea, restless, unable to be still. Its waters toss up mud and dirt. There is no shalom, says, the, says my God, for the wicked. Okay. Eleazar, Lazarus, was immediately carried up to enjoy his eternal shalom. There in Abram's bosom, or Abraham's side, or paradise, or 
Garden of Eden and wait for that for that glorious day to be resurrected while the rich man who is wicked died in his sin died in his his love for for material riches there is no rest so when he was buried he went straight to the place of torment to the place called Gehino and the rich man was begging father Abraham by saying send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and put his put in 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 my tongue because I am in torment but Abraham replied and said it isn't possible because between here and your place there is a great gulf affixed so we here cannot cross to reach you there and you down there is not possible to come up here it is something that gives two schools of thought the, the two schools of thoughts are one it is either you are with God if you are the kind of faithful enduring servant engaged in service until the end like that picture of Lazarus or you are a servant of mammon or material wealth there is no in between my dear friends we cannot compromise it's either we love God and serve Him faithfully, endure hardness while engaged in service. Still we have that fire burning in our souls to serve God despite of so many hardships and sufferings until the end. Or nobody wants to, to choose the second one, but it's either we are that clever, clever, corrupt servant who chose to serve two masters at the same time. Two masters at the same time. While having his so-called ministry and having purchased friends like that of that corrupt, clever, crooked manager servant, he purchased friends. He lessened their, their, their debts for his sake. He, he, he purchased his friends in order to win their, 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 uh, their homes that he, may, that he may be welcome in their homes. So, I repeat, some having their so-called ministry and having purchased friends, those who compromisingly agrees and make him feel at home and doesn't correct his mistakes but tolerate this these leaders in the ministry who are so comfortable whenever there is a, 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 a window of chance instead of going to soul winning to missionary work sharing their wealth in order to make the mission fields really filled with laborers sharing worshiping god with their wealth no you can find them in the mission fields neither they have no heart they have no heart to support missionary works but most of, the, of them are found in their vacation plans they go leisure, they go to trips. These are the norm that is happening. And God is never pleased with that. We cannot, we cannot just worship God by means of prayer. Prayer is good, make no mistake, prayer is good, but we cannot just worship God by means of prayer. 
worshiping God requires us to give. We worship God with our wealth, meaning He doesn't give if we do not give to the holy works of God, if we do not pay our tidings, if we do not pay offerings, the holy things of God. In short, as the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah says, if we have this evil eye or ayin ra, meaning to say stingy heart, our hands are closed when it comes to the generosity or liberality of giving. So they fall into the bracket of that rich man. They have no heart for missions, but their hearts are for other good times, vacations, pleasures, going to, to picnics and eating and marrying and so forth. That is never the will of God. Later, the rich man pleaded Avraham and said, Send Lazarus and send him to my five fathers or my five brothers so that somebody can warn them that they will not fall in the same place I fell in this place of torment. But Avraham replied and said, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, which are the writings of Moses, the five books of Moses, the five books of the Bible, the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. If they are not going to listen to that, if they are not going to listen to that and, and truly obey the words of God, what is Torah again? It came from the root word yara, which means guidance, direction, instructions, teachings, the teachings of grace, the teachings of love. It is not the teachings of law. It is not the teachings of legalism. No, it is the teachings about the love, the grace, the tender mercies of God, my dear friends. Those are the teachings you can find in the Torah. And then the last are the commandments of God. I have taught that, that already in the previous video teaching. You can just check that out and go back if you want to learn about the beauty of the Torah. So Abraham said, if they're not going to listen to Moses and the prophets, Even if they see a dead man resurrect, it will, be, it will be worth nothing to them. You know why? Because the scripture, who is, which is the only inspired word of God, the God-breathed holy scriptures, it is the only power of God unto salvation. It is the power that can change one's soul. That is referring to God's Torah, to the Tanakh, the writings of the prophets and the writings like the Psalms and Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, referring and pointing out to one, one aim, and that is the Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah my dear friends I pray that this message had been a blessing to you may you have a very blessed Shabbat and may the God of Abraham Yitzhak and Yaakov bless you and your family if you have been blessed by this video teachings and if the Lord inspires you to partner with his ministry please do so because we exist fully by faith and God touches people who have sensitive ears to hear His direction so that you'll be blessed. And likewise, this ministry can be able to continue 
reaching out to others, teaching and presenting to many people to know our Jewish Messiah from his Torah and Tanakh. And may I just say this, may you, may you share this video teachings if you have been blessed and if you would like to consider uh, subscribing, click that subscribe button so you can receive notifications every time there's going to be new teachings. Shabbat Shalom, Lehitrot, and Kol Tov. כוכבים שמאירים את העולם ועם הזמן הם נעלמים טיפסתי על פסגות ערים בדרך גם שאלתי בעצה החכמים לא נתתי לעיניי להסתנבם מהמרות והבנתי שיותר מדי זה לפעמים פחות לקחת לי מתוך השקר שיר לנשמה אין עוד מלבדו מלוא כל הארץ כבודו הקדוש ברוך הוא מלך בני עבדו אצל מול היצר כמו מדבר צמא למים האדם נכנע ושוב הנפש מבקשת לה מסתור מתחת לכנפי השכינה גם אני עמדתי בפתח כמו כולם לבקש סליחה מלך העולם ולקחת לי מידה שיר לנשמה אין עוד מלבדו מלוא כל הארץ כבודו הקדוש ברוך הוא מלך אני עבדו אין עוד מלבדו מלוא כל הארץ כבודו, הקדוש ברוך הוא, הוא מלך בני יחדו. Oh